What's up, YouTube? Dylan here with Dylan's Home Espresso Bar, and today I am going to be helping you at home. So before I usually start my intro, I will cut it out to where I am right away speaking to you guys, but this entire video is gonna be non-edited. So you guys will see from me turning on my camera to walking back and talking to you guys because I want this video to be extremely real, extremely raw, and I want you guys to understand everything that I am doing and it's been the question's been asked so many times and I see it all over the internet uh, especially with people with the Barista Express mainly the Barista Express because those that's the machine that I currently own um, a lot of people ask how do you prepare the puck how do you distribute how do you are you okay yeah. my wife just hit the, the bench I told you this is not edited so you guys will know everything that goes on here um, however are you sure you're okay okay um, so I want to make sure that you guys know how to prepare the puck, distribute it, tamp it, and everything is going to be in an overhead view. So you guys can see everything that I'm doing. And I think this is extremely important, especially for you guys that are just getting your machine or people who may even have a machine that are struggling. And I don't want you to struggle because this should be a fun thing. This should be a fun thing that you should do with your family and friends and especially for yourself. So I want to show you guys the preparing of the puck and the pulling of the shot. I'm also going to show you guys how to froth milk. And I'm actually just going to show you guys something here. So we're gonna act, I'm just gonna show you guys the it's kind of the technique that I use before I actually go ahead and start frothing the milk. So one big thing is when you fill your milk, you wanna make sure the milk is filled to the actual pitcher. Uh, so right below the spout. So with this one, you're only gonna to wanna to fill it right here. So it's a little less than halfway. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to take, this is the steam wand. Just imagine for me here. So this is the steam wand. You wanna set that steam wand inside of here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it down here so I can show you guys. So if this is the cup, don't mind my grumpy slippers. So if this is my cup and this is the steam wand, you want that to rest right in the spout here. And it's your choice. You can either go to, uh, I know it's gonna look, it's gonna be opposite. So you can either go to nine o'clock or three o'clock. So if the milk is right here below this pitcher, right below the spout here, you wanna make sure that the steam wand, the tip, is right on top of the milk. So it's not in the milk and it's not over, it's not above the milk. You wanna make sure that it's kind of right above the milk. So it's touching the milk, but not, uh, not submerged. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is, is it, it, whether it's three o'clock or nine o'clock, whichever is more comfortable. I, I prefer three o'clock, but I'll show you nine o'clock right here just so it's easier for you guys to see. But when it's over here, you wanna make sure that first you get that spinning of the milk. So you want to make sure that that milk is spinning. Yes, I said spinning. So you wanna get that spinning going. And you're gonna to wanna to hear a paper tearing like a ch 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 sound. You don't wanna hear a hissing, you don't wanna hear a screech, you're adding way too much texture and air to the milk. And it's not gonna get that silky, nice latte art texture at the end. So once you get, so you wanna make sure you're frothing for about 30 seconds, yes. A commercialized machine, when you're frothing, normally only takes about five seconds to add air. And then you submerge that tip in there and it takes about five seconds, you're done in 10 seconds. However, if you're a Barista Express owner or any kind of non-commercialized machine owner, you know and we know the struggle that it takes about a minute to froth milk. It is what it is. We're not in a commercialized setting. We're not serving customers tens by tens by tens. We may have maybe one, two, three, maybe four if you're if you're really helping like friends out and you're serving them drinks. But you wanna make sure that you're spinning the milk when you start to add the air. Once you've added enough air and you get raised to about, so you're gonna start with about right here below the spout. And when you melt, when you do your frothing, it's gonna come about 20% of that. Once you hit 20% of where you started frothing, then you're gonna want to roll the milk. So then you're gonna wanna bring that steam wand from 30 or nine, or from nine to, or three o'clock and you're gonna to wanna to bring it in. So you're gonna to wanna to bring it towards the spout, but not all the way, kinda of just straight down to where you get that rolling. And when that rolling's happening, you're actually gonna be introducing all that air that you just put in. You're gonna be combining all of that with the milk. So, why is that important? So, uh, 
when you're mixing that milk together, it is extremely important to add or to mix very well because when you go to pull your shot, you might go and pour it and it might just be liquidy at first when you're pouring your latte art and then it gets really thick. Then you just get blobs, so then there's no latte art. It just messes everything up. Or vice versa, you can have really nice, nice pour, the design's looking good, and then you go for your pull through and it gets extremely, extremely light. And then you can't finish that awesome design. It almost looks like you smear it. So that is a huge part as well. So I will be making another video only on latte art and frothing the milk. However, I just want this really nice video overhead view so you guys can see the entire process. I will make other videos separate going way more into depth because I know a lot of you guys are wanting to see that and I am here for you guys. So without further ado, let's get to the overhead view and I really hope this video helps. If you guys can hit that like and subscribe button down below, I would truly appreciate it. Again, Dylan with Dylan's Almost Russell Bar. Let's get to the overhead view and helping you guys out. Peace. Not edited. All right, so now I gotta walk back in here and turn you off. All right, guys, so as I stated, we are gonna do everything in an overhead view here just so you guys can get a better understanding on what exactly goes on overhead when pulling your shot of espresso and frothing your milk. So first, we're gonna start out by doing what we always do and go ahead and dose out 17.5 grams here. And I'm gonna make this unedited so that way you guys can see the full process because I think that's important. And a lot of you guys are having trouble with pulling your perfect shot of espresso or getting close with the pressure. And I wanna show you guys everything I do without editing so it helps you guys out the best. And then I'm also gonna show you an overhead view of frothing because that is something that a lot of people are actually struggling with that I would love to help out. So my scale is a little off sometimes, but right now we're at 17.5 grams. And we're just gonna go ahead and put this in our niche grinder here. Go ahead and put that underneath. We're gonna go ahead and grind it out. So now we're pretty much done. I'm just gonna shake this a couple times here just to get the extra beans out. I'm gonna place this back on the scale and we get 17.6 grams out. So like I say in all my videos, niche. Oh, here we go. So 17.5. So we are at a zero retention. That is why the niche is something that I absolutely love. And it's because you get, what you put in is what you get out and you get zero retention, which is gonna make for the most consistent shots as possible. If you're struggling at home, you want to make sure you are getting the same dose that you're putting in as you're getting out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take our porter filter, wipe it out. So you don't want any water residue in here. You just want it to be hot. So you want to clean it to where it's dry because that could affect your puck as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and flush our machine. Very important to flush your machine here. Go ahead and wipe everything down. And now we are just going to prop this over. I'm gonna make it as even as possible. Zero static, if anybody's been asking, and I know a lot of people have. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, so now we are just going to I'll do a close up. We're just gonna kind of level this out a little bit even though we have our distribution tool here. So I'll just, I'll just do it in the air here, kinda. So here you're just gonna, you just wanna spin it one, two, about three times, three, four times and lift up. Cause you don't wanna over spin it. And then here with tamping, I'm gonna put it down here. I'm gonna just go ahead and change the angle for you guys. So you guys can see the tamp. And there's my grumpy bear slippers. So those are nice. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to hold, like I always say, you're going to hold it like a doorknob or whatever's most comfortable. I just don't recommend doing it like this because it's a little bit harder to control your tamp. So I like to hold it, my thumb, my index finger, 
put the bottom flat side up against the pad or any kind of hard surface. And you're gonna kind of lift your elbow to keep it up in the air so it's straight down. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that it sits even in the porter filter basket. And when you go to tamp, you wanna make sure there's even pressure on each of these four sides because it's gonna be huge when coming to channeling and getting your perfect shot. So now what we're just gonna do is we're just gonna put a little bit of pressure and we're gonna tap the other side, make sure it's even. You're just gonna do a half spin and you're gonna lift straight up. And what that does is it allows your puck to be nice and even. So like if you look at that, see how even it is all the way around? You don't want this one side to be higher than this side because you will get tamping or you'll get, sorry, you'll get a lot more channeling in your shot. So you wanna make sure that puck is real even, not only the pressure, but also the sides are all in the same spot. So if you look around there, I mean, all of that is pretty much even, and that's gonna play a huge role when pulling your shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys down. I know we're doing an aerial view, but I'm gonna kinda go ahead and flip this camera really quick. And I wanna show you guys the shot. So you're just gonna lock this into the porter filter, and then you're going to whatever scale you have, you're just gonna go ahead and put that there. And then let me actually get a mug for you so you guys can take a look at my tops here. No editing, just want it to be 100%. Show everybody the struggles that I may have. So here we go. So let me get the better view here. So now I'm going to pull the shot and I like to start my timer when I see the first drop hit. It's definitely based on preference. Some people do it in the pre-infusion. So we got the first shot. So there's, so the pressure looks real good and the shot is actually very, very nice. And that is just something that you will get when you have a uniform shot. And also when the pressure is perfectly aligned here uh, but I mean, as you can see, there's hardly any channel, uh, channeling going on and right there, I got 34 grams in 27 seconds. I mean, that is, I mean, I don't know if you guys can see that there, but that is a real good shot with extremely good crema in there. I'll show you that later on, but I'm going to put you guys back in the overhead view. So that way you can see frothing because I want you guys to fully understand how to froth your milk. And this is a big challenge that most people have. When you froth your milk, you wanna make sure with the Barista Express because it's not as strong, the Steam One's not as strong as say, like a Linea Mini or a uh, Lillette Bianca. So a commercialized machine. So you wanna use, I like to use the standard pitcher that comes with Breville because you don't wanna use too big of a pitcher because you actually have too much room in your jug. But it's harder to use a smaller pitcher because there's not enough room in the jug for the milk to fully separate and pretty much allow that air to go in and mix. So I, I like the standard cup or the standard jug that Breville supplies you. So now I like to keep my milk in a glass jar because it makes the milk colder and it chills it a little bit better. And I will show you guys right here. I like to fill right below the spout line. So right there. So pretty much right here in the jug. So if you guys can see right down here, right below the spout, and that's about perfect. So it's about halfway. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and I like to wet a towel, any kind of towel will do, but I like to, I just bought these little towels from Amazon. I love them, um, microfiber. And I'll go ahead and wipe down with hot water the steam wine because so much milk gets built up in there and it's so hard to clean. So this is just a preventative matter. And when you go to wipe it off, it's gonna be two times easier. So now what I do, I have it turned on. The steam's on right now. So I'm, I'm gonna wait for all that water so you can hear that water. All that water that's built up in the machine is going, and the steam wand is gonna finally expel and you're going to pretty much purge your steam wand right now. So now you hear, that's the pump kicking in. So once that pump kicks in, I like to wait a second because you can still see water come out right now. 
And now I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. Okay, now I think it's perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift up, go into the pitcher, and I like to hold it at 30 degrees. So notice how you're not hearing any screeching or anything right now. You wanna make sure you get that, that flow going first, and then you wanna pull out a little bit. So now you hear the paper tearing. Hear that paper tearing? So with commercialized machines, you only want to do this for about five to ten seconds, maybe five or six seconds actually, before you want to introduce, before you want to stop introducing air. But sadly, with the Breville, it has to be a little longer. So I like to go about thirty seconds introducing air, and this is going to make for a lot crisper design and a lot silkier milk. And so, as you can hear, it still sounds like paper tearing. So right now it's about 20% of the pitcher. Now I'm going to mix all of that air that I just put into the milk. And now I'm going to put it into kind of a rolling motion. So you want to stick away from the swirling of the milk. You want to get more of a, of a um, rolling of the milk because that's going to incorporate all of that air you just added into the milk. And it's going to add it throughout the whole milk pitcher. So as you can see, it's rolling, it's rolling. And now... It's about, okay, so now it's too hot to touch. So now I'll keep this in here so we don't add any extra air. Go ahead and purge your steam wand. You wanna make sure you purge your steam wand, get all that milk excess that's built up in there out of there. And you wanna make sure you clean it. So like even just one wipe like that is good, but I like to just completely go ahead and clean that. I mean, you pay a lot of money for these things, go ahead and keep them clean. So I'll take a little bit extra time in getting that all set up and ready. So now, I mean, milk is extremely silky. Very good. That's about 30 seconds of adding air into the milk. Do it too soon, you're gonna get runny looking froth milk. Do it perfectly for about 30 seconds, then add air. See how there's, when I do that, there's no air that's on the side or any kind of bubbles. That's what you want. And now you wanna add it to another pitcher. So what I'm gonna do is that's just allowing any kind of air bubble or any kind of air pockets that are in the milk to be completely taken away. See, see how smooth that is? So now we're just gonna go ahead and give it a couple taps, spin it, and now we're gonna take our shot of espresso. So here's the crema still, it looks very beautiful. You're just gonna tap the jug or tap the cup, spin it around, not too much, and you wanna kinda tilt it. I like to tap this a couple times. So now what I'll do is I'll add a little bit of blob into the middle or into deep inside the crema, and then I'm gonna work my way around. So here we go. There we go. So there is a design for you guys there. Uh, came out pretty good, but that is how you froth milk. So now I will go to the standard view and I will go ahead and talk to you guys a little bit more. All right, so as you guys just saw, that is an overview, an overhead view, non-edited. I'm not gonna edit any of this. So if I mess up, you guys are gonna see it on camera. Like I said, I wanna be real with you guys. Here at Dylan Some Espresso Bar, I just want to make the best coffee as possible. And not only me, I want you at home to make the best coffee as possible because that's the point of this channel. You know, I don't wanna show you guys perfection every time and I wanna show you my failures. I mean, if that's important because people learn off of failure and that's just something that a lot of people aren't willing to accept. However, I am and with this channel, I wanna be able to reach out to you, my viewers. And I know a lot of people are struggling getting the new machine or having the machine and struggling with any kind of uh, pulling that perfect shot or just pulling a good shot and frothing the milk. So I am here for you guys and really want to make this video uh, as sentimental as possible because I think it's very important that you guys at home learn to use your machine and love your machine because it is a great machine. This is a great hobby and if you have if you have if you have this espresso machine and you are excited to use it, you should be because it's something that has definitely helped me 
and I absolutely love getting up in the morning, turning on the machine. That's probably one of the best feelings is getting up and just waiting to make that espresso. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys. I know you guys just saw it into the video. Don't get discouraged because this will, you guys will get your turn and it will turn out perfect. But see how that the contrast between the actual coffee and the crema and the actual design itself, see how bright it is compared to the canvas. So when frothing your milk, it's very important that, hold on here. So when frothing your milk, it's extremely important to introduce air a little bit longer. So with the Barista Express, it's a great machine, don't get me wrong. The steaming power and the steam wand is not the greatest. Uh, that's not the huge problem because I don't have to pump out 10 drinks for customers here because I just make it mainly for me and my wife and family and friends. Um, but I mean, they're, they're patient. They can wait a little bit longer, but yes, frothing with the Breville Barista Express or any kind of Breville machine that I've been used to, except if you go into like the dual boilers, but right now we only have the single boiler and, uh, but the good thing is, is it, although it takes a minute, you can get really good textured milk with the Barista Express. It just takes a little bit more time. So I would normally say, I don't know exactly how long that was. Uh, maybe you guys can add it up or I'll add it up before I edit it or not edit before I post this video on YouTube, but it usually takes about a minute to a minute and 10 seconds, which I'm okay with. Obviously down the road, I want to buy a better machine to steam a lot faster and to get less air in the milk because the Breeze Express does add a lot more water than a commercialized machine because their steam is a lot drier. However, you want to make sure when frothing your milk, if you take anything out of this video, you want to make sure you hear paper tearing. You never want to hear any screech or hissing sound. That means you're adding way too much air to the milk and the foam is going to be extremely, extremely thick and it's going to be extremely hard to pour latte art. And not only not hard to pour latte art, but it's going to be extremely hard to get that taste and that texture, the creaminess, and then like they bring out the nuttiness of the actual coffee bean itself. So you want to make sure you hold it for 30 seconds, add air for about 25 to 30 seconds. And it's not just air, you want to hear the paper tearing. So if you listen closely, you'll hear the shh, 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 shh. That's what you want to hear but you wanna make sure it's going slow and you wanna make sure you have that vortex going. Vortex first, when you dunk your steam wand in for that last 30 seconds, then you want the rolling. So you want the vortex when, when frothing the milk, but then when you actually incorporate everything that you just put in there, all the air that you just incorporate in the milk, you wanna make sure you get that rolling because when you're just rotating, it's gonna be harder for all that milk to go in and it's gonna be harder for it to mix together. But when you have that rolling of the milk, it's gonna be a lot easier to incorporate all of that texture in the milk to make it all uniform. Because some people might notice when they go to dump their pitcher, when they go to do latte art, or just pour the milk in, it's going to be extremely like liquidy and then you're gonna get really thick clumps at the end. You don't want that. Or it's gonna be really thick going in and then it's gonna be really light so it's hard to finish your latte art. You might have a beautiful design going then you just can't finish through. So you wanna make sure that all that milk is uniform and incorporated with that air and you are gonna get the best latte pour as possible. Again, don't get discouraged, it takes time. Uh, I've been trying to do this for about a year now, only doing about two cups a day. So it's a little bit more uh, challenging for me and maybe for you at home, maybe it's just you or maybe it's just you and a significant other or a friend. However, you're not in a cafe and you don't practice all the time every day. You might only practice once or twice, so don't get discouraged, you will get it. And as always, if you can hit that like and subscribe button down below if this video has helped you, I would truly appreciate it. I can't wait to make this a family channel to get as many people from around the world as possible so that I can help you and you can help me and we can just share the love of the coffee community together. As always, my name is Dylan with Dylan's Espresso Bar and until next time, peace.